Hey guys, Carl here. Today we're gonna to be talking about my A7S3 Cine build. Just a quick blurb about it. I built this guy out so it'd be easier to use out in the field and I can take it apart and use it, you know, just the camera itself if I wanna be more discreet or not cause as much attention to myself. The A7S3 is an amazing camera. Uh, it gives you so many features um, obviously, the FX3, the FX30, A1, A7 IV, FX6, you get a lot of features with all of those cameras also, and some more than the A7S III, but I own it, it's paid for, it works great, so um, that's why I built it out like this. And I'll kind of go through the components and why I chose each of these components in this video. So to start off the build, I have the A7S III Tilta full cage. This cage is awesome. It has some really cool features about it. It's got two NATO rails on it, so a top NATO rail and a side NATO rail. Uh, I added two more NATO rails for my wooden handles right here and here. I think that this cage works really well. It, uh, it's pretty bulletproof. One thing cool about this cage is it has an RE rosette on it. Um, it says it's an RE rosette, but I, the teeth aren't exactly the same, so you will, you can use RE rosette accessories, but it's not gonna hold the same as like a, a real deep grooved RE rosette, so bear that in mind. It has two cold shoe mounts, so I can use one up top for my, um, I, I have my top handle on the natal rail up top, so I, I lose that one. So I still have access to one on the side here um, that allows me to put my wireless mo uh, microphone or if I want to add an XLR mic or something here, I could do that as well. So just kind of nice to have. The bottom of this cage has a proprietary um, plate that goes into the bottom, the 15 millimeter rod holder down here. And it kind of sucks that that's proprietary as I'd really like it to be easily to, easy to remove and like put on a gimbal or a tripod or something like that if I didn't want to use the bottom um, bracket. Uh, maybe not a tripod, but a gimbal would probably be the biggest one. So I have to balance this whole thing or take it completely apart and put it on the, on the gimbal. So there is that. Next, I'm going to talk about the V-mount battery plate and the actual V-mount battery that I'm using. So I have the Tilta V-mount plate. Uh, it has no pass-through, it's just a plate. And then I have this accessory, this 15 millimeter rod accessory at the bottom that screws into the bottom of it and sits on the back of my camera. The reason I chose this one is because if you take off the actual locking, so like right now there's no lock on it, I can just pull it off and put it on. It's really secure. The lock is very nice to have, but it stays on. I've never had it fall off. I've shaken it around, I've been riding the back of things and never had an issue with it. But I like it that I can just keep this, you see this probably on a lot of videos, is you can keep this, um, your LCD monitor on the back of the camera off to the side like that, and you can just flip the camera, check your settings, and then flip it back over again. I, I really like that. Or if you're you know, needing to protect it, you can flip it around. Um, the reason I chose this V-mount battery, the Watson Pro VM98-MI, is because it has USB-C on it. So the USB-C on this guy allows me to charge it without a dummy battery. I've heard all kinds of bad things about dummy batteries and them burning out a camera or having issues with it. So I chose to go this route so it can just charge, so it can continuously charge the battery. And uh, this guy, you know, you can get all day power between the monitor and the camera itself. It, uh, it lasts a long time. You can probably get, you know, realistically four to six hours with it. Um, I've never had to change out a V-mount on a shoot during a daytime shoot or something. So uh, heat definitely affects that, but that just depends on what you're doing. All right, next up, I'm gonna talk about my side handles. So I have the Tilta um, wooden handles on both sides so I can really get a good grab of it and hold it into my chest like this. Um, I love these guys. I think I might change them out at some point just because when it gets hot out, they get a little slippery when you have some sweat or something. They're comfortable. I've never had any issue with them. I would like something maybe to rotate like my FX6 has. We'll talk about this follow focus. So this is the Tilta Mini follow focus. Uh, I have it mounted on this NATO, on this uh, 15 millimeter rod that comes out of the top of the cage up here. Uh, this cage has a little 15 millimeter rod holder, which is pretty neat. And I just run this guy, you know, with my finger like this. Um, you know, middle finger, not flipping you off, I promise. Or I'll run it with like two fingers as I'm holding it. It works really well. Uh, if I need to do big adjustments, I'll run it with my fingers or with my hand on the other side. 
and then I'll kind of fine tune it with that if I need to. Uh, it works, you know, pretty good. All right, uh, next up, we're gonna talk about the Bright Tangerine handle. So this is by far my favorite thing I've purchased for this whole rig. Um, probably, it's, I mean, besides the camera and everything else, it's up there as far as expense goes too. I absolutely hate, and hate with a capital H. I know you shouldn't hate things, but I absolutely hate monitor mounts that swivel and tilt because they always, for some reason, when I'm trying to use them, go bad on me. They'll rotate when I don't want them to or something like that. So I got this guy. This is the Bright Tangerine uh, 15 millimeter rod like holder thing. Uh, and then the wooden camera sells this monitor mount that just is a nice tilt. So I can tilt this guy back and forth really easily. And if I want to swivel it, I just pull that pin, flip it around, and Bob's your uncle. I'm off the races again. I say that a lot in my videos. I apologize. So yeah, that's this 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 guy is really cool. You can um, telescope it in and out. So if you want more weight on the front or the back, like you have a heavier lens on, you can push that all the way forward and really get good balance on it. Um, I love that feature. I use it all the time. It's got a ton of mounting locations on it. it has all you know, RE pin locators. Plus, it's all 3/8 threaded, so uh, you can really put anything you need to on this on this top handle if you want to. It's a top handle. Not much more to say about it besides it's comfortable and it's built like a tank. And I want to own more Bright Tangerine stuff. My Tangerine. If you're ever watching these videos, hook the brother up. Next up, we have the Small HD 702 Touch. I love this thing. I've made a video about this versus my Atomos Shinobi. Um, you can watch that down below. I'll leave a link. It's a great monitor. It works so well. It, um, it gives me a very clear image. It gives me a lot of confidence when I'm shooting. And I know pretty much what my image is going to look like on my, on my monitor or on my computer uh, for editing and what the final product will look like for customers. So highly recommend this and I absolutely love it. Um, I have it hooked up right now to the DTAP and then HDMI because I'm running it off obviously A7S III only has HDMI, no SDI ports. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what that is. Polar Pro Matte Box. I have had this matte box since it came out. Um, this is the second version of it. Uh, it has the dual stage so you can run two filters in there at the same time. I usually run the uh, four, or sorry, two to six, I think it is. And then right now in here, I've got the six to nine plus a mist. Um, and you can run all the other filters within it also that Polo Pro makes. That is the only thing downside to this matte box is the fact that it is proprietary to Polar Pro's filters. And that's not a bad thing. They make great filters. Uh, just, you know, if you break one or something like that, you can't just go down to a camera shop or somewhere else and grab a filter and throw it in there. Uh, so it is proprietary to that. Besides that, there's not really too much else to this build. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. It looks like there's a lot of cables and stuff going everywhere, but it's a pretty simple build, realistically. It works great, and it kind of makes me look like I know what I'm doing. And um, we build these kits to look cool, not to use, right? So I'm kidding. Uh, it, it, it functions the way it should function, and I, I love the fact that I'm able to have confidence and also uh, know that it's gonna do the job I need to do on set or out in the field. So with that said, um, if you have any questions about this build, leave them below. I'll be sure to answer them as fast as I possibly can. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, maybe give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you haven't, and yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.